Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. <laughs> We're happy you're joining us today. Stitch is an online quilting talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us as we chat it's about current track. topics in the quilting world. <laughs> People who interrupt each other, techniques to improve your own projects, and fun stories about um, why we started this episode three times. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps laughing. Our episodes come out twice a month, complemented by virtual stitches and podcasts. And you can learn more about us and our lack of professionalism at the stitchtvshow.com. Well documented. <laughs> Our show today is brought to you by Ink and Arrow Fabrics, a division of QT Fabrics, who have graciously provided super cute things for our table. I may have just busted out some Lionel Richie hello to this fat quarter because it's little telephone. <laughs> and then, well, yeah, anyway. Yes, and she's got some jams happening here. Right. <laughs> so thank you, Ink and Arrow. Yes. <laughs> today we're going to be talking about what Google can tell us about quilting. Because Google knows all and how pattern testing works. We're joined by our quilt transform that is hung at AQS Lancaster and Paducah shows and will be at Sisters Oregon in July. So, what's up? <laughs> Big news came out this week, the week of yes, filming. Yes. Yes. That NBC Universal purchased majority stake in Craftsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it they did. did. And everyone's like, what does that mean? Huh. How about that? <laughs> and we're all kind of looking at each other like, maybe there's going to be a new television channel. Maybe. It, maybe. It could be all about quilts. Well, Craftsy does more than quilts. Oh, I know. They do a I mean, lot imagine of baking, a lot of... An all frosting channel. <laughs> Man, I would tune into that in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen you more mad at me than when we were oh. eating cupcakes once. And I got a cupcake. It had too much frosting on it for me. Not and even I a thing. scraped it off. That's not a thing. And she she almost came. I mean, I thought choking would be involved in my... No, you might have dropped the cupcake and wasted more frosting. <laughs> she was not happy with me. Seriously, an all-frosting channel, NBC. Girl, call me. <laughs> we can talk. I have ideas. <laughs> well, I, I think it's interesting. We'll see what NBC has to, you know... Well, it's curious if it's more wider distribution for Craftsy, which I think is most people's hope. Yeah, I think that versus that's cool. NBC also owns Bravo, and are we now getting, like, <gasps> random... <laughs> Quilter drama. Dun-dun-dun. <laughs> what happens on Quilt Retreat stays on Quilt Retreat. <laughs> yeah. <kind of> shows. <laughs> you never know. That LCR game's got a lot more meaning now. <laughs> which is a dice game that we used to play to pass around fat quarters. And, but at the end of it, one person wins all the, th all the fat quarters. All the fabric. Yeah. And I, it doesn't necessarily go together either. That's, that's when you go, oh, and you have to make something out of this. All the fat quarters. All the fat quarters. So, yeah. So, yeah, that was a big announcement. We're kind of stay in tune to see what happens. I think it's interesting. I mean, I like it that a more um, mainstream business is taking interest in more niche markets. I mm -hmm. mean, you have to admit the knitting, the quilting, the not cooking so much because you got food network. You've got a yeah. few different food type of um, networks. Um, but I know I've got craftsy classes that are how to bake bread and mm -hmm. how to make pizza dough. And none of these classes I've watched, but I own them. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> but... I do like that, you know, th what channel was the British Bake Off? It aired on PBS in the U.S. I know, but the one that was the American version didn't. It, it, it was on ABC. Oh, ABC. So I didn't know if, like, some of that kind of cool... I think I think there's Because there appetite. was a sewing one in yes. BBC that never made British it... A, yeah, sewing. which they canceled, mm -hmm. and it never made it across the pond, and I would have liked to have seen... You know, a sewing one. Although, it's not like you can sew stuff in six hours at this level. Yeah. <laughs> at this level, which got 120 hours of quilting, <laughs> um, you're not going to get that level of, I don't know, like face-off yeah. that you watch. And what's the other one? The Creature Shop? Uh, that was a Jim Henson one, yeah. Where they did but I'm puppets. just saying from a 
craft, mm-hmm. artisan, Where it's multi-day. Stand, yeah, yeah, multi-day. Yeah. Isn't there one where the guy makes knives? They have this knife competition. Possibly, but I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, I think it's on the History Channel or something where they make um, different kind of cutting. And it's, and it's artisans like, um, you know, blacksmith mm-hmm. with the metal and creating the knives and stuff like that. I don't know. So you wonder if that's going to happen to our little, our little quilt world. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe NBC just thought it was a neat video platform that had potential. Because it is a very interactive platform where there are... I agree. If you assume that the teachers are the stars and that then there is built-in interaction, right. chat capability, and maybe they're in it purely for the technology and they don't really care about crafts. You never know. That's true. But it's a huge market. You think they would. And let's be honest, you know, I think cable companies are not... They're losing business to that other pl- other mm-hmm. platforms. Yeah, online. Online stuff, yeah, definitely, with Hulu and... You know, cool. All those Netflix and uh, Netflix, her favorite. Well, my speaking, favorite. Speaking of technology and online platforms, I sprung this topic on Lynn. Yeah, and I don't know Jack, so you just have a blank card. I do. I have charts. <laughs> <laughs> In so, so what? What made you come up with this topic, though? Um, so I was listening to a Freakonomics podcast. Ooh, I like Freakonomics. And they that had was an, an interview book. with a guy about As you what. Do. Uh, Google reveals about different parts of the world based on search terms. Because when you do a formal market survey, it's a person asking another person, do you do X, Y, or Z? And people are super embarrassed about their actual habits and they don't always answer truthfully. But you're alone in your living room with just you and Google and you ask some weird stuff. (laughs) Like, Google, what's this thing on my leg? You know? (laughs) Sometimes Google doesn't know. No. So... I, they mentioned yeah. Google Trends, which I had looked at a while ago, but it is it is a way to access high-level search metrics from Google, Okay, which is the most popular search engine, you know, at yeah. least in the English-speaking countries. I would say, yeah. Um, so I did some research about how quilting compares to other crafts and also Ooh. what trends we've seen over time. So my first chart, and we will put these in the show notes for a more detailed version. Okay, so, so this is... This is a five-year view so the orange line, and these are compared to each other. So the orange line is the search topic quilt. The blue up and down line, knitting, and the gray line is sewing. So you can see of the three. That's not even to me, though. You Well, and that's what was surprising. Sewing is a broader topic area than quilting. So that doesn't surprise me that it's more popular. But shouldn't that have been quilting and not quilt? No, according to how they name the topic. It's t- topic is named quilt, not quilting. Oh, okay. So that's that's a Google thing. Okay. Uh, I love the knitting because everyone worries about knitting in the winter. And then they're like, oh, it's too hot to knit. Forget <laughs> it. And then, oh, it's cold again. Oh, it's hot. Oh. So this is definitely a Northern Hemisphere English-speaking viewpoint. Oh, right. Because yeah. there are... Because it'd be flipped the other way. But what I found super interesting when I dove into quilt, there's a map view you get. And quilting as a topic is more popular as a portion of overall searches in Australia than in the U.S. <gasps> go Australia. See, this is why we need to go. Well, this is why we love Australia. We, it is we have had several topics about Australia. Yes. So thank you, Australia, we for keeping you. the hope alive. Yeah. So um, because I'm a big nerd. Yes. It's true I am. <laughs> she is. I, uh, I took the Google uh, data and put it in a comma separated value format and imported it into Excel and did some trend line analysis. So you did a CVS, CSV, CSV. So CVS the trend line the... for knitting mildly on the rise, the trend line for sewing mildly on the rise, trend line for quilting flat to just slightly negative for a five year. Really? Review. Yes, flat. We're flat. Flat. That's hard to imagine. Yeah. Bummer. Aww. So I'm not. Y'all can play with the math formula if you want. I believe. So that's... do you think it's because? Well, sewing to me can include quilting. Yes. So that. So definitely more interest in crafts. Kind of over the last five years, there's a rise. Huzzah. So but can quilting we... kind of flat to slightly down. Yeah, but can we can we break sewing out to understand what part of that no. is quilting? No, Google or what part let you go of that, that is 
You know, because there's home deck and, and soft toys. And yeah. All, yeah. And so there's no further break for this unless you look at clothes sewing or fashion sewing or those particular terms, which right. I didn't dive into. Which is runway, whatever yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. So what's the name of that show? Flat. Project Runway? Project Runway. That's where I was kind going. Kind of flat. And then I got curious and I thought, what's up with modern quilting? So for five year search volume, and this isn't compared to the others because modern quilting is even below quilting where that bottom line was. So modern quilting, I mapped it to a polynomial equation, guys. Some serious calculus. So not a straight line because I did a straight line and it looks down, but it didn't show you where the peak was. Uh -huh. So the peak showed up, you know, here about 2013 because the, the trend line does this. So it peaked in 2013 and it's kind of coming back down. And now it's kind of flattened out a bit. Aw. Aw. So. Makes me sad. And I, I did both modern quilt and modern quilting. Modern quilting had more hits than modern quilt. So. Yeah, that's why I was asking in that other. Yeah. Quilting would have more hits than quilt. Now, if you search for modern quilt guild, it looks the same. So it's mimicking traffic there. Okay. Okay. And then I thought, so that's general, like, web search. But you can narrow what you're searching for. Okay. For example, YouTube's. YouTubes. The YouTubes. So same three search terms, knitting, quilting, sewing. Knitting, crazy bananas. Everyone discovered video search and YouTubes and oh, gosh, it's cold. I need an emergency scarf. <laughs> How to make emergency scarf may be a popular term. <laughs> do, 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 do. Need socks. Yes. How do you how do you knit socks? Now what's interesting mittens for sewing. The peak volume here happened about April of 2014. I have no idea why. Something happened April 2014 for general sewing. It just went bananas on YouTube. wonder why. I don't know if there's like a crazy viral video that went out or something. Yeah. Maybe. And then there's like this weird dip here. Early May, April of 2016 where it just pfft, everyone just stops. They were done stuff. with that video. They were like, get out of here. They're like, that. we're... But the trend's kind of the same, although, so while sewing was increasing in general search, it's decreasing. You can kind of see a trend line here on YouTube. So YouTube. everyone's kind of like, ah, whatever, sewing tutorials over it. Whereas quilting, it's been, eh, a little eh, it's a little down. What can we do to get this up? Is there hope? You're looking at the title of my next chart. No, I actually wasn't. Because it's upset. literally tiled, is there hope? <laughs> Is there no. hope? So here I've mapped quilting, and then I mapped the search term Kardashian. Oh, dear God. <laughs> so that's when Kim did her little broke the internet photo, that big old peak. <laughs> so it's, for a while we were winning. It's because nobody knew who they were. <laughs> and now, and now it we'll on. win again because. Oh, no, we're not. No, she will fall out of favor yes. at some point, and people will be like. But yes, there is hope because the red line. Cats. <laughs> Take that, Kim Kardashian. Cats are much more popular than Kim Kardashian. Yes. And but, quilting. And quilting. Oh, and for the record, this is a 12-year view. So, not a five-year. Okay. So, cats. Huzzah. Except for when you break, break the internet and then yeah. cats aren't so... Yeah, but then we come, we come back around to peak cats. There you go. <laughs> How does that, but cats don't relate to quilting, really. I have a hashtag. There's a lot, there's like cats with, cats with quilts, cats and sewing, like every time there's a picture of Nina on a sewing machine. Oh, that's true. A little more likes. Also, random fact, orange cats get the highest response in advertising, and that's why more is the cat. Way back from Nine Lives well, Cat Food. Well, last night, Nina was judging you. She was yes. sitting on the edge of the screen just looking down at you like, hmm. Yeah, she does that. What's mom doing? It's because cats are jerks. <laughs> <laughs> they are. But yeah, orange cat's more photogenic. Well, I know. I mean, I don't, I've never done that. I've looked at, you know, I honestly, have you seen those videos on YouTube where they say, you know, <laughs> what does Google say about, you know. Um, and it says the autofill as you start to type. Right, and it autofills. I thought that's what you were going to do. Guess not. No. No. And there's some disturbing quilting. things that you find. <laughs> oh, yes. I told you, well, I don't like it 
when you're searching for something innocently and you get like, oh, didn't know that was connected kind of thing. Yes. We talked about this. So don't look for sloth photos. Just saying. There's this whole... Just, yeah, yeah, just don't. Just don't. Just don't. Do not. Just, it was bad. Anyway, it was, it was an innocent so, search. So, now, I did, I did look up some celebrities. You did? Because I was curious, like, okay. Did if, you do a graph for celebrities? Well, they weren't, the differences were so close, they weren't terribly interesting. <laughs> well, they weren't visually appealing, <laughs> let me put it that way. Because it was like two lines on top of each other. So I thought, well, if I'm looking at YouTube traffic, we know that Missouri Star Quilt Company is like the, the bana- bomb. The bananas rock star of yeah, YouTube. And so I looked at, in general search, Missouri Star Quilt Company and Jenny Doan both are below people who just search for quilting in general. Oh, yeah, because they don't know. And like the line you can barely see, it's just like down at zero comparatively. Yeah. But when you put it, when you filter it just for YouTube searches, they're a little higher. And I was surprised at the name recognition of Jenny Doan compared to Missouri Star Quilt Company because I think of the company name, not the person name. But apparently I am backwards. an antisocial backwards person. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a surprise, frankly. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know that I think and that I, that's I totally expected surprising. their trend line to be up and I was right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they've just continued to rise in popularity. Yeah. So well she just understands the whole tie in you know here's a new pattern here's how to sew it Mm -hmm. here's how to and here's the fabric that you can buy it below click here and then when i look at name recognition of bonnie hunter versus her site name quiltville i was like i i think of her as bonnie hunter because i've met her we've we've had a conversation yeah and i'm like oh yeah her website's quiltville not bonniehunter.com quiltville more recognition Particularly because of her mystery quilt. So you see her traffic spike, obviously, when she announces the right, October, mystery November. Quilt. Right, exactly. Yeah. Which that makes sense because that's a really popular yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah, but what about like Tula Pink or, you know, um, Allison Glass or some of the other like more modern? So I did look at Tula Pink. Yeah. Simply because on the stitch in last night, <laughs> like we both were working on Tula Pink stuff. I, I, um, I like her stuff. And it, you know, honestly, it was not the recognition that Jenny Doan had. Seriously? Or Bonnie yeah, it was. And I think because that is a very specific modern appeal and you saw the trend line for modern quilting. Oh, yeah, I would agree. I mean, they're... although I think her target market is traditionally, uh, her demo is a little younger, a little more tech savvy. I, I would agree. say. I would agree. But you and I have talked about this, too. And I think that this is true in the quilt world. In different generations of quilters, there are, because we grew up in the 80s, we are more, rec, you know, cognizant of brands. designers and brands because we grew up with Calvin Klein and Jordache jeans and members only jackets. And yeah, I'm showing you that I grew up in the 80s. <laughs> so, but those were all things that were trendy and popular, whereas I don't think prior to the 80s where that commercialism in um, branding really was recognized and sold to that age group. Well, that has continued to grow. So this new generation of quilters follows, you know, Alice and Glass and Tula Pink, all their designs, mm-hmm. not necessarily. They don't go to the store and go, I just need some red fabric. Let me go over here and look at the reds. They're like, ooh, what's the new Moda line or what's the new basic gray yeah. line or what's the new, you know. So I think that that will change just because that generation coming into that is changing, you know? Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. what we find too in terms of tech savviness, we're we're not we're not the millennial generation that no. has grown up with, you know, technology since day one. We have adapted and learned to make use of it. Right. When I look at my parents, for example, they are learning how to use devices either from me or from their grandkids. Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> and so there's very different I, how things are being used. There. I just had this conversation. Someone who's over a booth is like, can I get my grandkids to help me take square payments? Yeah. I'm like, yes, you can. <laughs> she goes, they're going to know more about it than I know about my iPhone. Or, you know, so I'm like, we we need people to take payments at booths mm-hmm. for the quilt show. And yeah, I mean, that's who they're going to to get that information. Yeah. We do know, and 
I probably shouldn't say this because she watched the show, but when my mother-in-law calls the house during a weeknight, it's to talk to Mike about a computer issue. <laughs> yeah, I get that too. <laughs> yeah. It's not a big deal. So I'm like, we always know. We so, love you. <laughs> I did search for us. Oh, no. We're not even on the list. Yeah, I typed in the Stitch TV show, and Google literally was like, who dat? <laughs> <laughs> so we're not we're there. The, yeah. We yeah. had, like, one line for general search, but there's, like, no geographic breakdown. It's like, yeah, who? They, they, yeah. Are you sure that's a thing? It's a... <laughs> It it's funny. not real. I'm like, oh, I'm not showing that crap. <laughs> it's just blank. And who's the Stitch TV show? We don't know. Yeah. Us. <laughs> so we are going to take a little break. Okay. What are we going to do in the break? We're going to take a closer look at the Transform quilt and the selfies that Quilters took, sent us. And we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Um, the next topic we're going to talk about is pattern testing. So, Lynn, have you ever tested a pattern for someone I besides have. me? Yes, I have, actually. <gasps> and it didn't go well for them. Oh, dear. Why not? <laughs> well, they gave some wrong dimensions and stuff, and they thought it was right, and we had to call them and say it was wrong. And I'm like, Hilarity ensued. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what they... The problem was I'm visual. I catch things more visually than I do like written word, written word stuff. And so they had the sample up there, but when they had us make it, it didn't match. Like oh. it was a thinner fence than they had. What's a fence? The pattern was to make a fence. Oh, okay. And the quilting piecing to look like a fence, and the posts were thinner in their sample than it was in the pattern. I'm oh. like, this is wrong, or this doesn't match. Doesn't look right. The, I meant to do that. I don't want a fat post. I want a skinny post. <laughs> it looked weird. So, because I had something to compare it to. Okay. So, yeah, I have done it. I'm, I'm not the best at pattern testing, as we well know, because, because of how I make things. Um, I can look at stuff and go, oh, this is how you do it and just do it. Yeah. And you can't do that when you're pattern no, testing. You I, have to read it and follow what it says. And I, my brain will skip ahead and go, yeah, but that's not right. And I can do it this way and it's better. And that's that's bit me before in a bad way. And it's, you know, worked out okay other times. Yeah. But So then do you give feedback in that to say I would do it this way? Because it's more efficient? Or do you just let their directions lie? Well, I've given feedback to you well, saying yeah. I would do it this way. or I'm like, that's cute. Yeah, she usually <laughs> ignores me. Bye-bye. Or we argue about it. Not, I know you're shocked we would argue about it. But we would discuss it intensely with scissors. <laughs> I'm kidding. There may have been some slapping. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I say this, I don't think this works right or, you know, this, this is how I would do it or stuff. We had that conversation last night mm -hmm. I think before we're working. I'm working oh, yeah, on we were talking about the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I said your suggestion wasn't going to work. Yeah, she argued with me. And then you said, well, yeah, that's why you do it this way. I'm like, that's the way I said you should do it. And then we agreed violently. <laughs> so. Fine. You're right. Let's go. <clears throat> Yeah. So, so, but to me, pattern testing is very much reading what it says and doing what it says and doing what it says. And that I necessarily, my brain just skips ahead. So I'm like, yeah, but it won't work like that. Or this yeah. is how I want to do it. So, yeah, I've done pattern testing both for quilts and mostly bags. I sort of say you do a lot of bag pattern testing. I used to before we started writing our own patterns. And now I've kind of haven't volunteered for a lot. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Because we need you. <laughs> yeah. So um, in terms of the mechanics of how it works, so pattern testers are the people that get called in to test the pattern to make sure it's written right before it gets published. And this helps cuts down on errors after the fact because it's kind of embarrassing. Oh, and yeah. it's troublesome if you do find an error afterwards, you have to republish or publish an errata page on your website or 
you know, somewhere where it's public knowledge. Well, I know when I'm writing a pattern, I'm making it as I'm writing it. Yes. So it's very much for me is what did I do? Write it down, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so typically the way that it works, um, pattern designers have a roster of people and sometimes it's local friends they know through a guild or it's just general fans that they've met through website or social media and they kind of put a call out like, oh, I need help testing a pattern. Would anyone like to? And there's usually not payment. You usually don't get paid to test a pattern. Your payment is getting a free copy of the pattern. Um, and that's how I've been paid. I've got free copies of So Sweetness patterns. Uh, I provide all the supplies with one exception. Um, I made a sample and tested a pattern for Sarah for her bag, her second book. Um, mm -hmm. And so she provided all the fabric because she wanted a very specific look for that. Right. And she also gave, you know, the interfacing and the hardware and all that. But all the other ones that I've done, which are independent patterns, not for the book. So she never used a picture of what I made in anything other than a blog post. It wasn't formally published. Um, in that case, I've provided all the materials, you know, every, picked my own fabric because it's, you know, oh, it's a thing that I'm making that then I get to carry around and use. Right. Exactly. So not a well-paid gig. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who are hired to do pattern testing yes. for magazines that they test the the patterns that come into magazines and those people are paid yes. per hour. It, but that is with a formal publication, not like an indie designer. Correct. Like Correct. Uh, so in terms of time, there's usually an expectation of, you know, I'll give you the pattern this day. I need feedback within two weeks, one week, you right. know, whatever. And, it you know, it depends on what their goals are. And, I just and their do it that spreadsheet says. Yeah. That she gives me. So That's then, what I do. And the way that it's worked well for me, um, I get the pattern in a Word document. I have a PC. It's not a problem. I turn on track changes, which is a specific editing feature in Word. That, and that way I, I make corrections feature. or I make co I add comments to it. Like the, the directions were clear here, but I think adding a picture of this step would be helpful. So I kind of make suggestions that way. And not every suggestion I make makes it in the pattern because I've got the final pattern like, oh, she didn't do my suggestion. Whatever. You know, sometimes it's space considerations. Some patterns are have a lot of pictures in them, you know, for every step, and which you kind of need for bag making. Mm -hmm. With quilting, you can get away with like make a half square triangle. Seriously. Sometimes you don't get a picture of the finished Google that triangle. one. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> it, you know. There are it, a lot of people who show you how to make the absolute yeah. dragon. Each, each designer is different. So just be aware of that. Um, so I, I return to Sarah. Like, okay, here is my edited Word document with comments feedback. Here are pictures of my finished bag. Um. And then, yeah, and any particular highlights or trouble or, you know, oh, here's what fabric I used, if you want to call that out as well. Because sometimes I use cool fabric and sometimes I use, like, just stuff I have that no one cares about. <laughs> but I thought it was neat. <laughs> well, you know, I think that that's the benefit. I mean, you get a free pattern. You get to make whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you get to choose what you're making or they just send it to you? So lots of times with Sarah, she'll like, all right, I have a new pattern. Here's an overall picture of the project that I made. If you're interested in testing this pattern, let me know. I need, you know, 10 people to do it. And she, I don't know how big her potential pool of testers is. Right. But not everyone gets called to do it. So if you say, oh, I can do it and I can make the time frame, cool, then you're in. Uh, for the book, it was, here are the different designs for the book. Uh, give me your top three and I will assign one to you. Oh, okay. And that's how that worked. Okay. And then she just shipped you the stuff, mm -hmm. which I got the purse out of it. It worked out well for me. I didn't know that I had the confidence to carry off a hot pink squirrel purse. And what? now I carry um, a blue raccoon purse. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I got a hot pink squirrel purse. And I love it. So, yeah. So, I, I mean, I, it's definitely needed because I hate getting a pattern going. Seriously. I mean, I have struggled through some... I have, there, there was one pattern and tool... That I did, I don't know, a year ago or whatever. And I read the pattern. I tried to do, I went to their online, watched their video, wasn't clear. Took the pattern to some of my favorite good friends who are very accomplished quilters, taught quilting, understand how to read patterns, all that kind of stuff. Tell me what this means to you. And they had, and it was, they were struggling with it. So it was one of those very frustrating and you're halfway through this 
quilt that you're like, ah. Oh. So I like it when we look at our, I, hopefully we look at ours enough that people don't struggle yeah. with them. Well, it works well that there's two of us. So yeah. when I write a pattern, you test it or at least look at it. And then we have a third editor. It's a cursory glance, really. Yeah, it's not, yeah that's true. Okay. That's not true. <laughs> I always make at least a sample block of whatever it is yeah. so that I can go, oh, yeah, that worked out. Or, you yeah. know, we may not make the whole quilt, but definitely. I know that when Stripper's Knot came out, the person who was pattern testing it was convinced I didn't give enough fabric requirement for the piano key border. And I'm like, I promise you there's enough because I very much documented how I made that. And she was just convinced there wasn't. She was like, and after she was done, she was like, there was so much left over. I'm like, I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because that definitely, it was deceptive just because of how yeah. Stripper's Knot is made. Yeah. It's a great pattern, though. I love it. Still like it. Still one of my favorites. <laughs> I know I made it, but. Eh, eh. You're allowed to have favorites. Yeah. So. I, do you like pattern testing? I, uh, it's not my favorite. I do simply because I, inside me, lives the teacher's pet who loves to correct people. <laughs> it's true. She's in there. She comes out frequently. I don't like, okay, in oh, my I perspective. I have corrected so many teachers. Oh, I'm so mad. But then I'm like, um, but I think you're doing it wrong. I just say it kind of cute. You can get away with it. I don't. <laughs> I don't like pattern testing because I don't like people telling me what to do. So I have a hard time with pattern following. Well, too patterns. bad. Yeah. I, I love correcting you. I know. She does <laughs> all the time. You can see that from episode 101 <laughs> through 220. Yes. Just my jam. <laughs> just be quiet and let me talk. <laughs> okay. I let you do that. Anyway. So, if we were trying to organize pattern testers, which one day we might need. Yes. Here's why I'm going to organize pattern testers. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Pam, you're in charge. That's my organization. Because you're going to do that it. That was my plan, too. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're going to do it. Pam, you're in charge of this. And we're done. <laughs> Thank you. That's why we're partners. <laughs> Because <laughs> one, you'll enjoy it. Well, I won't go that far. Two, you'll have a spreadsheet. I won't. I will. <laughs> there may already be one. I may get to see it in Google Drive. I don't know. Not sharing it. <laughs> you just you just sit there and be and pretty, then, Lynn. <laughs> she'll just tell me what I need to know. <laughs> she sends me notes. You need to do this. Okay. All right. I will. And yet they put me in charge of big things. It's really you volunteered for it. I know, but they asked. Like there was a some some qualification and made them go. I think Lynn could do this. So and I said yes, and I never will again. Nope. <laughs> so the way that I would organize it. Yes. Um, honestly, because we've got followers. YouTube, you know, whatever. It's very easy for us to say, hey, guys, we think we need some pattern testers. Please email us if you're interested. Yes, and, I agree. And, you know, send a sample of a quilt picture. Because if it's, because why I would request that is if it's a sewer that likes our show but has never made a quilt before. And one on one hand, there's benefit They're not going to start with my patterns. No, they are not. They're going to start with mine. <laughs> the benefit there is, you know, you do want a mix of experienced quilters right, and who may have ideas about how to improve what we're trying to Me. do with a pattern yeah, versus a newer quilter that is trying something for the first time, which is a little more of our target audience. We want tech-savvy quilters looking to step up their skills. I think it's interesting because as an instructor, I'm very good with beginner quilters. Like, I understand teaching that aspect from a verbal standpoint, but <laughs> that's not the patterns you write. That's not the patterns I write at all. <laughs> I write these complicated. I mean, yeah. the pattern tester for Diamonds Are Forever, I thought was going to strangle me yeah. at some points. And that's why I was like, good luck with that. I'm not testing that pattern. <laughs> she, she wouldn't touch it. <laughs> well, in truth, I 
there wouldn't touch it at the time and, because well, that was, was our secret, time, yeah. secret swap challenge thingy. So. Yeah, it was a timing yeah. thing. So, I mean, I would put a call out, ask for, like, hey, what level of quilting do you think you are? Because you want a mix of beginner quilters, more experienced quilters. Right. And Diamonds Are Forever is a complicated pattern. Yeah. It's a great pattern, but it's complicated. Yeah. yeah. So, and then from there... I would, honestly, I like the way Sarah does it, where it's, you know, put the call out. Hey, the first 10 people that respond, you're in. Here's the deadline. Make the deadline. Yeah. Do you get, okay, what do you do if they don't make the deadline? Because it wouldn't be me. What, what, were you, what are you going to do when they don't honestly, make the deadline? Honestly, you get withdrawn from the pool of potential testers. Like, eh, all right. You're not going to, okay. You don't, so you, you, don't get one, a, you don't get one a strike, you're out. It's not a three strike rule. I mean, there are exceptions because I know one time with Sarah, I was very close to the deadline, and I think it was because there was either a death or an illness. Oh, yeah. Or I mean, like life, a travel, life. something came up. So, I mean, yeah. you know. Just open lines of communication. Yeah. And if that's so, the if case, somebody says to me the pattern, just keep the open lines of communication. Yeah. Hey, Bad thing happened. Yeah. I don't want to name don't bad just thing. Fall off the face of the earth. Bad thing happened. And ghost. <laughs> right. Well, like I had a chair of one of my, you know, uh, quilt show chair drop out because of an injury. Yeah. And there's nothing they can do. They have to have surgery, and it's you know, yeah, you don't want those bad things to happen, but no. they do. It's called life. Yeah. And they happen. So, all right, so timing, mm -hmm. participation, what else? Now, this came up in um, a Twilters discussion, so right. kind of a group of quilting podcast listeners, and what they said was sometimes when they get the final pattern, if it's a print copy of the pattern, they get a print copy, and sometimes the um, the pattern designer sends a little something extra, you know, a couple fat quarters or just something fun as a thank you. So I've seen that happen, too. Oh, yeah. When I've been involved, it's been all digital patterns, so there's not the, oh, hard copy thing received. So, but, right. You know. But Sarah's treated us well because, like, you taught a bag class of mm -hmm. hers. I taught a couple. And, yeah. And what's nice about it is you had that relationship with her and were able to get a percentage off for the people mm -hmm. buying the pattern who were taking your class. Yeah. So it And it worked out because it was a guild yeah, class. Yeah, it was a guild class. So we were able to, you know, she gave you a little coupon that said, hey, if you're taking Pam's class, you can have, I don't remember if it was ten or twenty percent yeah. off, or something like that, you know, which was nice. And you went online, and I remember she allowed us to buy more than one pattern, so I bought a couple of her patterns, which was more sales for her. But yeah. I only bought it because I was taking your bag class, and cool. you know that worked out well. Yeah. So payment is minimal if you're doing that. Now that's independent stuff. I do yeah. know that if you're testing for, you know, if you're a pattern tester for. Uh, uh, magazine or, or more business, then they do pay you to do yeah. that. Cool. And I think some by the hour and some by the project. Yeah. could be I different depending on what you're doing. So. So, have you ever tested a pattern for someone or did you like or dislike the process? We know how Lynn feels. Let us know. Leave a comment on our blog or here on the YouTube episode. And that's all we have for this episode. Again, today's show was made possible by Ink and Arrow Fabrics because fabric should be fun. You can learn more about them and their fun fabrics at inkandarrowfabrics.com. And we'd like to thank 77 Peaches Big Thing Productions for helping produce The Stitch. You can find their links on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. If you're interested in sponsoring our show, please email us at info at thestitchtvshow.com. If you enjoyed the show, please like it on YouTube, share your thoughts on this episode's topics on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and tag us with hashtag the Stitch TV Show. The next virtual stitch ins Friday, June 16th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast on our channel here on YouTube and our blog. And my podcast, Hip to Be a Square, is out Fridays at hiptobeasquarepodcast.com or iTunes or Google Play. You can email us with questions or comments at info at the stitch TV show .com or buy our patterns at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends. <laughs>